Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again, and welcome to another video in this Speed Tree tutorial series. So, this is the tree that we are left off with from the last tutorial, which we kind of built like experimentally. So in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the forces inside speed tree and we're going to be taking a look at all the different types of forces and how they affect every different object and we're going to be taking a look at the settings that goes along with every force and how they affect the object and in the end we'll be taking a look at adding a custom mesh to the scene and using it as a force to be able to influence the tree and the tree and the leaves and everything will be interacting with it. Alright, so we better off uh, create a new file here. So control N blank scene here. Or we can we can pick from one of those presets, but it's it's fine. So I'm going to add a trunk here and I'm going to add a branch and set the number to probably like what twenty or even more. So there's two ways of creating forces. So you can select your object and go and add the force and it will be added directly to the object so you can select it and go to forces and the direction is enabled and you can go ahead and you know experiment with the value and the direction is actually pretty self-explanatory. So if you want to select the force by default it's created in the center of the scene. So click on the forces, click on direction hit W and move it like here. So you have this arrow here. So you have the type, which is direction, which we can set to another type as well. But for now, we're, we're working with direction. You can increase the strength of the force. The indicator icon or the scale is basically doing nothing, just the visual representation of the force. So whichever direction this is, if you hit E and rotate it, that's the direction that the force is going to take and push the objects. So if you go minus, it'll go the opposite direction, just like that. All right. And you have something else here. You have attenuation, which sometimes can be useful if you have multiple sort of objects. Uh, if I select my base tree node here, and I'm going to increase the radius, and I'll select this trunk here. I'm going to go to all and I'll add a few more trunks here and go down here and increase the position so it'll be so we'll have like more of them so right now it's affecting everything and if I select this um, this force here and I'll go you see that it is affecting everything so if I go and turn on attenuation to linear so it is going to give us some area so whichever object is inside that area that is going to be affected by the force and the other objects that are not they will not get affected by the object so I can increase the distance and it will encompass more objects that are inside so it can be an object uh, a branch or a single part of a branch so you can see that it's looking it's working pretty nice here so you can see the possibilities of you know working with this force here. So all of the forces pretty much has this uh, attenuation. So yeah, that is uh, quickly how the direction force works. So if I delete this, and there is another way of creating force. So by default, you would select your object and apply it. But then you would go, if you select nothing, you go to forces, add force, and add a magnet. It's created here, but it is not affecting anything. So I'm just going to go to indicator scale increase it and then the object that you want the force to affect it you will select it and then you will go to the forces tab and uh, tick this magnet or whatever force that is in the scene will be listed here and then you'll be able to activate it so it sort of acts as a magnet so wherever this is those uh, objects will be attracted to it. So you can increase the strength. So there'll be more. You can also go to these objects and increase the length so that you'll have just like that, you know. And yeah, you have your branches sort of attached or getting attached to this magnet. 
and it works really well. So you you can see the possibility, you know, when you're creating some like you know branches or alien trees or whatever, you can you can go ahead and do this. And it also has an attenuation. So if you turn on linear, it'll be there. So whichever object is inside it, it'll actually be there. So you know you can see that it's working perfectly fine. And you can also go ahead and increase the distance and it'll cover more objects. So you can go and even just set the indicator to zero, but the force is still there and you want to select it, you go to the forces, magnet, and keep in mind you can add multiple forces. So if I select these, I'll go add a gnarl. A gnarl is basically, you know, if I go ahead and scale this up, it'll basically rotate your object. So if I go ahead and it's just like a twist. So you can see that we have our magnet force and then we have our gnarl that is, you know, working simultaneously together. So you can have multiple forces as you, if you select the branch and go to forces, it is listed here. And uh, we have twist as well. So you go and select this, go here and twist. And what that will do is if I select this here, so I'll go ahead and increase the indicator. It'll basically twist your objects just like that, you know, and you can see that we have three forces working all together to create this effect here. So I'm just going to delete this and also delete the gnarl and our magnet is fine here. And let's go ahead and select our branches again and I'll go to force, add force, and then we have curl. So curl is basically a combination of gnarl and twist. So you see here, it's here. And again, I can go ahead and move this up, increase the indicator scale. And you also, if you want to, you can add the attenuation. So it doesn't affect everything, but only the places that we want it to. So you see that, you know, you can go and set this to zero. Uh, we have we have uh, what force is here. So if I select this curl and magnet that is actually affecting our trees simultaneously together. All right. So I hope it does make sense, and you can you can already think of the possibilities that are endless with this. So you want to create a tree and you want to make it look random or twist it or whatever. You can go ahead and add these forces. And the other thing is we have planar. So if I select this, it'll actually make your branches flat. So planar is here. It's, a, it's actually a plane. So if I increase this, I can increase this and you will see that it'll make it look like a plane. So you have those broad trees, you know, and you want them to look planar. So you'll add this force. And if I select the branches here and go to forces, you see that we have all of them forces kind of together and we can turn them on and off planar curl or on and off and increase the sort of uh, strength and also increase the variation so you'll be having different and varied sort of force values so yeah that's basically it and uh, there's another force, uh, if I delete this, there's another force here. Uh, it's called, if I select these branches, knockout. So yeah, uh, these are the seasons and stuff that we've already taken a look at. And then we have knockout here. So the knockout is actually a pretty interesting force here. So uh, if you go here and whichever um, you know branch is in this direction, it'll actually delete them or knock them out. Just like that, you see some branches got deleted. So you can increase the strength and everything will be kind of deleted or decrease it. Or if you just want to delete some specific areas, you can go and give them some, you know, uh, attenuation. So I'm not sure where would you use this, but it's there. And one of the very important forces that we will be taking a look at, which is very, very powerful and useful, is the geometry. So you can add a custom mesh inside Speed Tree, and it'll act as a force, and uh, the uh, sort of branches and the leaves and everything will collide with it. So if I go here, 
inside 3 Studio Max, I have a text here. So I'm, I'm not going to use this text. I'm just going to delete it. I'll go and I will uh, add a torus knot here. So it's actually a pretty cool looking object. So I can go ahead and scale this down. And I want to export it and use it inside Speed Tree. So I'll go File, Export, Export Selected. And I'm going to go with uh, torus knot. And make sure it is an OBJ, and you can select quads or triangles, but in this case, I'm going to go with quads and export. So now, going inside Speed Tree, so we can add a custom mesh. So we have the Materials tab here. I'm going to go to the Meshes tab, and I'll add a mesh here. And I already have it here inside my Tutorial folder. So I'm just going to double click, and it'll bring it here. So you want to go ahead and drag it into the scene and it says add geometry force to the scene so yeah this is the geometry so what I'm going to do is just move it up move it here it's a little too big so I'm gonna hit R and scale it from here from three directions just like that and it doesn't have any materials right now so what I'm going to do is I'll go to the materials tab you can you can add a material just click here and I'll probably go and add like this material and I'll just drag it here so you have you have it here so what I'm going to do is just move it near a tree you can select your branches and go to the forest and we have the torus knot so what it does is it's actually going to collide with this which is actually really interesting so if I go and select this you can increase the string so you see that it kind of wraps around it in a very cool sort of way so I'm just gonna go and turn off the magnet and curl so you will see that we have it's 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 really really interesting so if I go and add m more of these branches so if I increase this you will see that we have all of these sort of wrapped around the object so you can see the possibilities of this. So you, you can you can build your branches and leaves and trees and sort of interact with your live object. And the cool thing is, if we go ahead and turn on growth, what it will do is it will grow around the object, which is really, really awesome. So just like that, maybe the frame is a little too low. So I'll make it like 910 and play again so you'll see the object is in fact growing across the surface of uh, you know the branches are growing across the surface of this object and I can add a material to it by going up go to the mesh uh, sorry go to the bark apply this one and I'm just gonna go here and just apply it to these yeah so you'll see that our they're growing and we can change like different colors to it we can also add like leaves to it so I'm just gonna go add some scattered leaves here so yeah and I'm gonna go and add a material to this so leaves this one and we have the this one and we'll just apply it to the leaves so we have our leaves here and right now if I play this back again you will see that they are in fact growing and they're looking really nice so I can select this light here once the growth is done so I'll select this light and rotate it so we can see this a little bit better and yeah so we have our leaves and if I hit 8 we have wind and it's looking really nice here so yeah this is the object for us and it's very powerful so you can export your custom objects from your 3d software of choice Maya 3ds max and 4d blender export its obj and bring it inside speed tree and use it as a force and the tree and the branches and the leaves will be sort of interacting with it
And also about the growth and about speed tree in general, you can go ahead and open up these, mo uh, you know, the pre-built models that comes up with speed tree. So you can go ahead and open up one of these models and learn a lot about, you know, how the, each of them are made. So if I go into this trellis growth, double click on this, you will see that um, we have these uh, trunks here. And this object, the trellis, is actually imported from a different 3D software and they've given like a material to this. And what they did was, if I select this uh, trunk here and go to the forces, you see that this trellis is actually used as a force onto these, uh, you know, uh, onto these branches and trunks. And the cool thing is, it's actually growing as well. So it grows around the object and it looks pretty nice here. So you see the, the, the leaves are kind of coming up beautifully. And yeah, this is like a very good example on how to use an object as a force. And the scene, the branches and everything will be interacting with it. All right. So this is basically the forces tab of uh, the forces part of speed tree that we've taken a look at and I hope you guys enjoyed it hope you learned something from it and if any questions you can go ahead and put them in the comment section below for this tutorial and I will make sure to answer them and if you want to say thank you to me and all the efforts that I put in into making these video tutorials for you guys you can go ahead and support me on my patreon page and subscribe to my channel for more of these videos and let me know what you think. Alright, so we'll see you in the next part of this series.